welcome to my YouTube channel, Silver Fox Model Making, as I make my first steps into actually producing a model making video. This is video one, I'm sure there are going to be a few out of focus shots and a few shots with bits moving away from the actual camera lens itself, but if you bear with me as I push through for my first attempt at model making on YouTube. The model I've chosen for my first uh, video is the Airfix Spitfire Mark 1A 170 second scale. It's part of a free piece uh, series I've been doing on the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. Uh, and I've chosen to do the Spitfire as the first model. This will be a very basic kit construction using only the gear you see here and perhaps some other bits and pieces, but generally like a typical kit would use in his bedroom whilst making a model at home. Nothing too special, maybe the odd airbrush for putting a bit of clear coat on later on. Kit comes with two sprues and a canopy, and I usually start with giving them all a good wash just to make sure there's no release agent left on the actual parts itself. This could cause a bit of blotching as a paint later on when you come to doing the paint work. Just give it a nice wash with detergent and give it a good dry afterwards. Okay, starting with the cockpit, I'm just going to identify all the pieces as per the instructions that go with the cockpit and give them all a quick coat of the um, cockpit green paint. Once this is all done, um, I'll then start cutting out the pieces for the first assembly. In later videos, we'll go into more detail on the, uh, the actual painting of the cockpit, but for my first video, we'll just pick the basic uh, cockpit green colour. When you're cutting your parts off the sprue, always leave a little bit of waste plastic uh, on the part you're cutting off, just so you can trim it up later. This will save any disasters of actually cutting bits of the actual piece off when you take it off the sprue. For those that don't know what the sprue is, it's that plastic frame which all the parts are attached to. Now it's just a case of trimming off those bits of extra sprue from the actual uh, the frame itself with the shoes and or using a scalpel just to trim off those little bits of extra plastics from the mould uh, for the actual production process. They can just be simply scraped off with, uh, with a sharp scalpel. Before putting most of the parts together, just start with a quick test fit to make sure it all goes together nicely before you actually put the glue on. Uh, once you put the glue on, there's sort of no turning back, so it's good to make sure it fits together properly before you actually put the glue down. For this part of the cockpit, it's actually important just to make sure that these parts are actually square. Um, if they're not, you could have difficulty putting these parts of the cockpit into the actual uh, fuselage itself. So just do a quick check, make sure it's all nice and plumb and square. When you're doing that initial paint of the parts, when you come to uh, sections where you know are actually going to be bonded to another part, it's best leaving the paint off that particular area as it helps with the, the glue and the bonding process. Again, just making it sure it's all square. As I said before, if you don't get it all square, you're going to have a few difficulties fitting it into the actual fuselage. Okay, uh, fitting the seat and the, uh, the joystick controls. And the keen-eyed observers amongst you might notice that I'm actually putting the joystick in back to front, but I'll uh, correct this later on before I actually put it inside the fuselage itself. This is where a good sturdy pair of tweezers comes in handy for uh, forcing those uh, fiddly little pieces into those tight spots. Now's the time for a bit of touch-up paint, but as I mentioned before, we're not going to get too much detail on the cockpit area, but um, just colouring out the actual parts of the cockpit itself in the right colour scheme. Okay, painting the pilot. This is where you could actually spend hours going in as much detail as you want, but as I said, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to keep it basic, following the colour schemes as mentioned in the instruction package. So which is pretty much just the blue for the flight suit, and the yellow colour for the uh, life vest, and a bit of brown for the uh, bit of brown for the headgear and some uh, skin tone for the face. We now come to actually putting the pilot into the seat itself. This is actually a crucial part. If the pilot sits too high in the seat, you'll actually have dramas putting the actual canopy on the fuselage. So have a look at the instructions. Find out how far down he's actually supposed to be in the seat itself, and make sure you position the pilot in the correct position. At this point it's probably good to do a quick test fit in the fuselage just to make sure it all uh, fits nicely before the glue hardens. Now we come to our first decal and yes it is pronounced decal and this is the control panel for the actual cockpit itself. Uh, you can see all sorts of fantastic solutions on the, 
web itself for actually uh, soaking the decal in before you put it on. But today we're just going to use a simple old lukewarm water. So you drop the decal into the water itself, uh, let it soak for a little bit, testing every now and then just to see if the actual decal itself starts to move freely on the blotching paper on the back. And once it does, take it out and it's now time to remove the decal and put it on the actual model itself. For small fiddly decals like this, I actually pluck them off the, uh, the backing paper with tweezers and put them directly onto the uh, model itself. If you want, you can put a bit of water where the decals go in just to help uh, sliding it around and getting it in the correct position. You can then use cotton buds or tissues just to get the excess water off afterwards. As you can see, I left a bit of waste plastic when I cut the actual fuselage pieces out. Again, this can be trimmed off later with the actual uh, cutters themselves or just a sharp scalpel blade. Now comes the ultimate test as to whether you've constructed the cockpit parts correctly. Um, once you actually place them in here, if they didn't go together quite as the way they should have, you'll have difficulty actually getting the two pieces of the cockpit together. Uh, firstly, start off with actually putting the oxygen cylinders in behind where the seat goes. Now, if you have a look at the actual instructions, you'll see where the back and the front uh, bulkheads of the cockpit should actually sit in the actual fuselage frame itself. Just take note of these and put them in place. You can do a little bit of flexing with the cockpit parts just to help it sit properly. Always start with only gluing one half of the uh, cockpit piece itself. Don't go two halves, then try and squash the uh, fuselage together. Just go one half to start with, make sure it's all positioned nicely, sitting well within the actual fuselage itself. Then once you're happy, start uh, gluing up the rest of the fuselage and the other half of the cockpit and put the two sides together. Don't go overboard with the glue at this point, just a nice thin film dab. Just spread it around and make sure it covers the surface of the actual part you're trying to glue it together. But don't want it oozing out from the seam afterwards. So just a nice thin coat of glue. Once they're together, now it's just a case of applying pressure and just holding them together whilst the glue itself goes off. Um, I found, even though I was pretty confident my cockpit parts were assembled correctly, it still had a bit of difficulty getting the two halves of the fuselage to join together. But with a fair amount of um, pressure and a fair amount of time, they eventually came together quite nicely for me. I found with this particular mould, one half of the fuselage was slightly higher than the other side, so I've just given it a quick scrape down with the scalpel. After that I hit it with a uh, 600 grit wet and dry paper, then followed by a 1500 grit wet and dry paper, and that brought out a nice smooth finish. Okay, we're now moving on to the wings, again cutting them out from the sprue. As you can see here, I'm not cutting it flush with the actual wing itself, because there's a good chance you'll probably cut part of the wing off as well. So I'm just leaving a bit of excess plastic on from the sprue when I'm cutting them out and uh, we could probably give this a bit of a trim up later just to make, it not, make sure it's nice and flush. And here we are again, just, uh, just trimming off those little bits of extra plastic just to make sure the um, actual surface of the actual part itself is nice and flush. Once again, uh, with gluing the actual wings itself on, uh, we're not going to go overboard with the glue. Again, we just want a nice thin smear across the uh, glueable surface. So just a quick dab of glue, then spread it out along the actual surface itself. Nothing too overboard, you don't want glue oozing out once you put the two pieces together. You can even use your uh, scalpel blade just to just to spread it out just that little bit thinner just to make a nice even uh, distribution of glue on that uh, glueable part. So even though I'm putting the wing part straight in here it doesn't hurt to just do a test fit before you put the glue on just shows you struggling around if you weren't 
you're not quite sure how the parts go together while the glue is still going off. So just a quick test fit beforehand before you put the glue on could save you a bit of groove later on down the track. But now, as with the fuselage, it's just a case of pressure and time and hopefully the, uh, the part will dry soon. As you can see, the parts seem to have gone together well. There's no actual excess gaps between the wing and the actual fuselage itself. Same process with the wing, just uh, a small dab of glue, then smear it along. As you probably notice with the, uh, the top half of the wing section, I've painted the underside black. That's where the uh, wheel well will open up uh, underneath, so just that little black background colour there to help define the actual wheel well itself. So again, get the scalpel blade, just start fitting it out, just giving a nice distribution of glue along that actual flat glueable surface. So once you have the uh, the top half of the wing on, um, once it uh, comes back into camera view here, and you'll see it. Essentially, just making sure that uh, all the gaps are correct. There's no excess gaps. It seems to be fitting snugly against the uh, the bottom half of the wing, and uh, there's no actual need for a bit of filler later on. So just making sure it all goes nice together, nice and correctly, before the glue starts to go off too much. Then with a nice scalpel blade, just cutting off a little bit of extra plastic that came along with the actual uh, mold, process, mold process itself just uh, bring it back to a nice flush finish with the actual tip of the scalpel blade. Exactly the same process with the other wing, just a smear of glue then making it so nice and evenly distributed over the actual gluing surface itself and once you have it together just make sure all the gaps are correct and it's actually fitting snugly um, we won't go into too much detail here, but um, yeah, it's just a repeat process of the, uh, the wing on the other side. Again, just using the scalpel to smooth out the surfaces, um, just a nice even uh, distribution of glue before I actually put the wing together. So now I'm just checking, make sure it's all together well and all the gaps are correct. Just give a quick once over after both wings are on, just make sure it's all sitting nice and symmetrically and it's all sitting where it should. Hey, uh, cutting off the rear control surfaces, uh, the elevators, just again making sure you leave a little bit of extra ex excess plastic on the part itself, you're not cutting flush with the actual part itself, just to make sure we don't cut away anything important. Uh, once we get that, we then take the piece and just trim off those little bit of excess plastics, just to make sure it's nice and flush. When it comes to gluing them on, just taking a little bit of care to make sure they sit nice and level, not at some weird angle, which will make it look a bit strange later on. So once you get one on, just a bit of fine tuning, just to make sure it's nice and level. And same applies when you're kind of putting the other side on. So once they're both on, just take a step back and make sure they're nice sitting in that nice level plane. Okay, the last part of the main fuselage itself is the rear tail fin. So again, as we mentioned before about cutting it off, just a bit of care, cut off a little bit of extra plastic, trim that off so it's nice and flush. So you'll actually find that there's a bit of a groove for the actual tail fin to actually sit in on the main model itself, which makes assembly just a little bit easier. So put the glue, smear it round, again nothing too excessive with the glue, and just slide it into that groove. That if you have to make sure it you now switch, it sits nice and uh, and straight along the length of the fuselage. Okay, fitting of the air intakes and landing gear. When I first uh, started planning this model. It's to take part in a like a free model diorama with uh, the Hurricane and uh, Lancaster bomber. And my initial thoughts were to have them all with landing gear up in the sort of flying type profile. Uh, so in this case, you can see me here. I'm actually going to fit uh, the wheels up in the actual wing itself to give that nice flush look. However, later on down the track, I'll probably decide to actually put the landing gear down as part of the display. 
But um, as you can see here, once these parts are in, they'll actually sit nice and firm, so I'll actually have to actually pry them back out again later on uh, in the second video. But uh, here once again, trimming off the excess bits of plastic then uh, fitting them inside the actual airframe itself. Again, just a thin dab of glue and smear it over the glueable surface. Again, don't get too carried away, just a small little dab and spread it round before you actually stick it on. As you can see, I'm still learning on uh, how to actually keep the model itself in the frame of the camera. Obviously, something that will come with experience and time, but um, hopefully, it will soon. Oh, there we go, back into the actual frame itself. Um, I actually skipped over actually gluing the wheels in because obviously I'm going to be removing those later on and actually putting the landing gear in the down configuration but this is just uh, the front air intake. Once again it would be nice if it was actually in camera so you could actually see what I was doing but uh, just about finished now. There we go, all nice and done. So the last part of this video is actually preparing the canopy itself. Um, it's strange when you actually look at a model, the first thing your eyes are usually drawn to is that actual canopy area. It uh, obviously has a bit of detail to it. So obviously just need a bit of care when you're actually cutting it out, because uh, if this doesn't sit flush or there's a little gap and where you cut off a bit too much plastic, it can tend to stand out quite a bit. So just a bit of extra care when, uh, when you're trimming off those bit of excess plastics. As you can see here I've left a little bit on the rear of the canopy. This will give me a hand or this will assist me when it comes to actually painting, uh, painting the canopy itself. Um, you can probably see on other videos people actually put mask, masking on there or some masking um, solution on there to, uh, to assist in painting. But I'm just a bit of old school, I just use a fine tip paint brush and actually paint in the panels around the actual glass canopy itself. And there we have the finished product. Uh, again, rookie error. I didn't realise I didn't turn the camera on when I was painting the actual canopy itself, but uh, there you have the finished product. So that brings us to the end of part one of my uh, first model making video. Uh, the second half will start delving into the actual fun of painting the model itself. But until then, please like and subscribe to my channel. That way you can stay up to date when I put out further videos. As I mentioned before, this is only part one of a free model diorama which I'm making up, which include the Hurricane Mark I and uh, the Lancaster Bomber. So, please stay tuned for my next video.